Hey everybody, George of All Trades here, making a video I never thought I would have to make. If you read the title of this video, if you maybe got this passed around to you, yes, I am giving out my dirt script. Unfortunately, this is something that needed to happen now, as I found out that there was a leak. I found out the leak about a month ago, however, I thought the leak was contained to one person. That person essentially lied by omission. The, the words that they used did not make it seem like the leak had spread very far. It seemed like it was just them. Um, and they, they worded things in a way that made me think everything was alright. And I have more recently found out that things were not alright. There are people who, after a gentleman named Carnage came into our community from Gmod, started getting involved with the idea of having other dirt scripts out there. He made his quote-unquote dort script, um, the I in dirt replace to an O, and that script had a lot of issues. It was very, very just thrown together, um, but technically speaking, worked. Uh, from there, it did spark a couple other copycats and a couple people obtaining his code via various methods. And a few people have tried to tweak on that code and make it better, and so a couple more versions had come out. Well, one of those people ended up obtaining some of my older code through a leak, and then started using that code and giving it to other people. And so now, that's why we are now here. Um... So this is admittedly an older version. This is not the exact version I use to this day. I got to keep myself a little bit further in front. But this is better than the leaked code. And the reason it needs to be better than the leaked code is because if it wasn't, then the people who are using the leaked code would then um, continue using the leaked code and being able to gain off of what I made. Um, so, very similarly to what happened when my draft script got leaked, I came out with a slightly better version and gave it out for free, and now at this point most people using draft on Roblox is using either my draft script or an edited version of my draft script. I imagine very similarly is going to happen with this. Um, it just needs to be that much better for people to actually use it over the leaked version. So enough about the Roblox drama. Now we'll get into what you need to do to set this up. Um, so first things first, you're going to need a racetrack. And today we have Berlin Speedway already set up with a dirt layer on it. Um, but we need to go over exactly what that means. So if you aren't familiar, if you haven't driven enough of these dirt layer tra type tracks to understand exactly what's happening, this track is covered in parts. And you can see that here. Now, if you already have a track that's pre-built, putting parts on it is a bit of a pain. So my suggestion is generally the easiest way to explain is to build the track with the parts on it as you're building it. Similarly to an older tutorial I had done about building a racetrack, you build it in as a part of the parts that go into making that racetrack. So, Doing a very quick recap here, I'm not going very in-depth, I don't want to make this video too long, but you would essentially have a part which would be your racetrack part. And so let's say that is this, and I'm going to make it black, I'm going to make it marble, and I'm going to call this groove. And then you have your part that goes on top. Generally speaking, I make this part about two studs. You can see that in my bottom right here. Um, and my Z is two. And then what I would do is I would either make this 0 0.05 uh, in the move uh, section and then resize up by 0 0.05, or I would resize up by 0.1. So it'd be two clicks of 0 0.05. Um, either one, and this is going to give you a rut depth. I would go no less than 0 0.05 if you don't want the track to be too um, rutted, you don't want it to be too abrasive. Do 0 0.05, the only reason that you need to do that is to not have a Z fighting issue where like 
when you're really far out, the two parts kind of mesh and you see like the colors fighting you one another. Um, so now this part that's on top, we're going to make it a brown color. Uh, I guess this one will do. And then you want to either make it sand or you want to make it pebble. And uh, you can make this any other ones. I just think sand and pebble are the best ones for kind of the unkempt style of dirt. It's like, you know, before a car has driven on it and kind of smoothed it out. And then you would want to change your move to whatever the width of this is. And then um, we're going to do duplicate, which is control D and then move each piece along. And so we would fill this all up like so. Um, and I'm going to call it there. So you'd obviously make the track however wide you want, however big you want, all that stuff. I'm, I'm doing a very small piece here, you know. Once again, doing very quickly. And then we're going to make our wall piece. And my walls are always uh, one stud in thickness and then five studs tall above the racetrack. So this piece here would be 1.1 and then I want to go five studs up. So we'll change this to five and then go five up and that's our wall. And I make my wall concrete. And then the last thing I need to do is uh, select all the dirt layer blocks and then uh, remove the groove one. Well, we'll name these all dirt layer. Um, this is something I should have done before I duplicated, but I didn't. And then I just need to go in enough to grab the groove one and rename that back to groove. Now, it is very imperative these brown blocks on the top need to be called Dirt Layer with a capital D, capital L, and no space. It's a very specific naming convention because the script that is used is going to look for that. Um, so once you have your track piece like so, you would group it with Control G or for any of these shortcuts I'm saying, you can also right click and you can find them, group, duplicate, etc. So we'll duplicate the entire group and then move it over. And then what you do is you'd go to the rotate tool with five degrees, rotate by five degrees. And then we line up the outside corners of the walls and you would continuously do that until you get your racetrack. Like so. So there we go, the outside corners are lined up, which also lines up the inside corners and lines up all these dirt pieces. And then for a straightaway, what you would wanna do is we would first take our groove block and we'd change our move tool to how big we want the straightaway. So let's say 100 studs, move that out by 100 studs, do the same with the wall. And then I'm holding down Alt so I can select these blocks that are inside the model. And then um, we would look at the size of these. These are 19.9. And then I would do um, a control D for duplicate and then move them over. Because the straightaway is straight, um, you're able to just move them right along without an issue. And so that would be how you make a racetrack with dirt layer on it. You'd continue doing the, the five degree turn thing. Um, what you could also do is if you have two pieces, you could then duplicate both of them at once and do a 10 degree turn and so on and so forth. Um, but that's how you would do it. And that's how you'd set up your track. And then the last thing that you'd want to do is you'd want to type in in the filter workspace in the top, which is also control shift X to get up to there. You type in dirt layer and then you would select all the dirt layer blocks. And I'm not actually selecting all of them right now, but if, if you did, you'd select them all. And we'd go to in here, custom physical properties, and then friction. And friction would be um, 
what you want the starting friction to be. So I would do 0 0.35, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, somewhere in that ballpark is generally a pretty good number to go with. And then we need to set up our, um, our groove friction. So then you would type in groove, you make sure to select all the groove blocks. And then once again, we'd come down to our custom physical properties. And in this case, I have it only set to 0.3, but maybe you'd want to set it even lower than that, like 0.2, or we even have some tracks that we have the initial friction is 0.4, and the lowest friction is 0.05. So big difference there. So um, the difference between the, the parts of the track that are still brown and fresh are going to be significantly different than the part that is completely black and is groove. Um, so you have all that and then now that that is all done the track is ready and it's time to get to what we do with the system so the system is going to come in this little brown box um, with my name on it for crediting of course and my series logo so we're going to open this up with the arrow and we have dirt settings as a folder and dirt script and um, then the dirt logo and label those are just for the crediting and the thumbnail camera is for the way the the model gets posted um, makes this show up correctly so um, you can forget about all that stuff just dirt settings and dirt script is what we want so first thing first you're going to take dirt settings and you're going to move it to server script service it's very important that you put it here because this script right here looks for that right there and then you're going to take the dirt script and we're going to copy it with control c and then we're going to come to our car and you're going to hold down alt to grab a block inside of a model and then you're going to paste it in to each tire and so you can do that like so or if you want to do it all at once you can hold down alt click your first tire while still holding down alt hold down control click the next tires and then now you can paste it into both and so at that point the dirt script is now set up but there's one last thing that you might want to take a look at which is the folding called dirt settings so there's a readme that goes into in depth of what I think that you should do with each of these values, depending on what exactly what you want to do, but I'm just going to go over a very quick idea of what each of these does. So activation speed is setting for how fast you want the car to be going at a minimum before it starts changing the dirt. You want this just high enough up that when a car is sitting stopped on track or someone's trying to do donuts or something like that, that they're not degrading the dirt for no reason. Uh, blue decrease green decrease and red decrease decrease the number of the rgb by that number and you you'll see what i mean by that in a moment um, these are all set to one currently so you're going to see that when i go out and test the car the rgb goes down by one for each of those values num hits is the number of times one of these blocks needs to be hit the readme talks more about how you'd want to set up that number dependent on how many cars you're going to have show up, how many laps you think you're going to run, etc. like that. And then stop color is the color in which the RGB stops at. And so this uh, stop color is dependent on exactly where you want it to, to end up. Zero is the minimum if you go lower than zero, so negative one or any other negatives even negative 0.01 uh, would be problematic you want zero as a minimum and actually this is an int value so you can't go into decimals um, but um, if you go less than zero um, then the color is going to have a uh, wraparound error which will make the the color of the track suddenly go to a bright green or bright purple or bright uh, red or blue or stuff like that it looks terrible so don't do that keep your stop color at least zero but
But if you want maybe not like a super dark black, then maybe make this number about 40, 50. Um, if you want this to, if you want the track to stop at like a gray for some reason, you could try something like 100, 150. Um, that's something that you can kind of play around with, but it will essentially stop degrading the color at that number. Um, so without further ado, I will show you that this does indeed work as we hit play here. And so we get into our sprint car and we head out onto the racetrack and we'll see just like that the dirt changes so what did i mean by the rgb values change by one so we have a piece here that hasn't been touched and you can clearly see that because of the concrete versus sand um, the sand has 131 104 86. Red is 131, green is 104, blue is 86. Now we come to our next block and we have 130, 103, 85. So as you can see here, um, each of these have been minus by one, which is exactly the same numbers that are in our dirt settings. So uh, sorry. Oh, that's right. Um, when you're in the play mode, this is why it needs to go into server script service. Uh, players cannot access server script service, so that's why I couldn't see it there. But when we're in studio, we can see it just fine. Um, blue decrease, green decrease, and red decrease are all by one. So if a track is starting to look too blue or purple, um, you can make changes to, to make that less happen. Like I said, the README talks about it more. Um, the only other value I just realized I forgot to mention is hip material. This is the name of the material that you want the track to change to. I recommend concrete, but you can pick anything. Just make sure to put the material name in here and spell the material name correctly. Capitalization matters, um, but that should all work that way as well. But if you don't want to touch anything, you just want to let it run the way it runs, you can just set it up exactly like I showed you here, and everything will work. So, like I said, this is the George of All Trades Dirt Script system, and I hope you guys have a fun time.